<clears throat> okay guys welcome to the turbulence point video um, inside of phase five okay so the turbulence point concept was actually derived from Wyckoff ideology and let me tell you why so before that though the definition of a turbulence point is a horizontal range that led to price in either a continuation or in a reversal right and I'll show you examples of both um, but anyways, right, th this really won't make sense unless you understand the logic side of it. Um, so, right, Wyckoff, right, the, the Wyckoff method is the study of trading ranges through using effort um, based on volume, structure, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we know that effort is based on volume, right, and that that is a, necess is a necessity Right, to allow ranges to give you a move, whether that's a continuation or a reversal. Right? We also know that order flow is the distribution of orders via mitigation. So when you correlate the two, we can conclude that non-structured trading ranges leave remnants of volume behind. Right? And it doesn't necessarily have to be unstructured. It could be just anything because at the end of the day, a turbulence point is just an interruption in price, which either led to the continuation or to the reversal, right? So there's two outcomes. There is a potential um, reversal, right? Based on the turbulence point, meaning you just come to mitigate something that was left over inside of that range, and you then have that continuation, or you break through, and you more than likely come back into the area. But that won't be ba that won't be because of that. It'll be because of other reasons. But that will lead to a reversal. So. <clears throat> It's not necessarily a complex concept, right? But it meets the logic we portray. And that's what I think is the important part of trading any concept. If you don't understand the logic side of things, if you can't make any type of logical conclusions based on what you're trading, then it's hard to justify a trade, right? I mean, that's just, I, in my opinion, that's just a type of common sense, right? But also don't take this concept to be absolute, right? Because there's always three things that can happen to a POI, right? So for example, a sponsored candle, there is a, there's a chance it could react from the open. There's a chance they can react from the close, right? And then there's a chance that we can have a liquidity grab, right? But that's probably the most unideal scenario because it can be read as um, disruption or a break of structure, right? But there are many instances, I'm sorry, um, where you see price essentially, you know, take out the POI, then mitigate whatever took out the POI, and then you see the move, right? Which is why it's it's a bit, it can be a bit misleading. So just make sure that you know that this is a relative concept and nothing is absolute, okay? So here now we go into the examples portion. <coughs> so right here we can see, right, that we have your USD, right? We have our low and our high that took out our essential structure point here. So inside of this range, right, as we're coming into the discount, we see, right, that we have a quote unquote interruption of price. Why? Because essentially price paused, right, then break, broke structure in a smaller scale and then continued higher, right? But there is an interruption in price before the continuation. So there's more than likely money left behind here. So as you can see, we came back to mitigate the final wick here here right and that's what caused the next impulse right so as you can see it's not a tough subject all you're doing is looking for interruptions in price right that are then you know starting the new continuation right example number two right so here we see two um turbulence points so we see one on one scale on right here which is the 15 minute minor intraday turbulence point and here we see a smaller term um, turbulence point which you can see here right as you can see there is an interruption in price before we go higher and then here there's an interruption in price before we go higher right so you can see that there's relative equal lows here so there's liquidity so as order flow is necessary to come back into the POI maybe it was coming back not to mitigate something but to take out liquidity and maybe we're coming back for this turbulence point right because as you can see let's see right here as you can see, inside of the first POI, we literally broke right through, 
meaning that the, the chances are that we had a high, a low, a retracement, and order flow was pushing for this target, right? So this turbulence point is now invalid, right? Because we broke right through it, caused no type of reaction, right? And here we have that smaller time frame turbulence point. And as you can see, this is actually a wick, I believe. Yeah, there's a wick here. So which is why that same wick, you can see it's using the body, I mean the open until the below the, uh, the low of the candle, right? We're not using the inefficiency fill just because I was deriving it from this time frame. So what happens, right? You see that mitigation, you see the disruption, right? The sign of bullishness, the sign of strength, right? Then we come back to fill this wick and we continue higher, right? So I'm, I, I'm not like, um, you know, breaking down the POI section and I'm not breaking down, you know, the smaller time frame stuff inside of this range because I care for you to understand the power of the turbulence point. Right. Whereas this in this scenario, if you wanted to take this this trade, right, this turbulence point isn't not is not necessarily giving us a trade. It's more so giving you a narrative to play based on, as you can see. So example number three, right, another one where we see um, two turbulence points because you see interruption here before continuation. Right. You could even consider this one, too. But when I'm looking at the swing range, I'm also always looking for that discount. So as you can see, we came back to mitigate this wick here that mitigated this final wick here that created the upside move, right? So that wick here came there and created a new impulse. So as you can see, it's very effective when you know how to read it, right? And the reason why I, um, I even care to make this concept is because a lot of people struggle to find POIs. And I think this is a great way to start um, searching for POIs, right? So you know, essentially, that's essentially how that works. All right, the final example here, right, we can see we have a high and our low as our overall range, we have a retracement continuation, right. But as you can see, this turbulence point, this interruption in price led to the reversal in terms of here, right. So we're coming up turbulence point reversal, we came back to mitigate the turbulence point, right which then led to another break of structure here. And as you can see, there's an interruption in price here before the impulse came back into the interruption, right? Because there's inefficient pricing inside of that interruption. And as you can see, the uh, mitigation was perfect there. So as you can see, it's, it's really narrowing down areas of where I'm trying to sell at, right? And it's allowing you to continue order flow, right? Which emphasizes on that continuation over reversal mindset, right? So, with that being said, that concludes this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.